Welcome back to Sawtooth Tactical. The proliferation of pistol braces on the market for the last 10 years has made way for some of our favorite firearms. Whether that be, you know, MP5s, BNTs, AK, AR pistols, pistol caliber carbines, 300 blackouts, all of these things, they were basically widely available to us with shorter barrels because of pistol braces, because the NFA. So we're gonna talk about that today. Make sure you get subscribed to the channel, hit that bell notification, and let's talk about why these are important. So the NFA, the NFA, National Firearms Act, the Gun Control Act, these things have made SBRs, short barreled rifles, also short barreled shotguns, suppressors, full auto machine guns, things like this, they were, they've been heavily regulated and it's quite a process that you have to go through in order to acquire one of these things. Well, about a decade ago, as you all probably know, the pistol brace was born and that has made for the high popularity of things like AR-15 pistols, AK pistols, and many, many other firearms, CZ Scorpions, all of these things became available to us in a platform that was very easy to shoot and was just very effective, ergonomic, easy to maneuver, and you know they worked great, and it was because of pistol braces. Now, you can get all of those platforms in SBR format, but again, what you have to go through in order to get an SBR is daunting for most regular gun owners. Most people don't want to have to go through the Form 4 or the Form 1 process in order to acquire such things. And so for a long time, we haven't had to because of pistol braces. And so whether the ATF wants to call braced pistols SBRs or not, it matters, but the reason why it matters is this. Pistol braces, whether you want to admit it or not, basically enabled us to have things that would technically be considered SBRs without having to go through the SBR process. That was a really, really nice thing for us. And it made a lot of sense. It bridged this gap. So within the NFA, 16 inch rifles, perfectly legal, treated as any other firearm. Handguns, pistols, perfectly legal, treated as any other firearm. But when it comes to short round rifles, all of a sudden this in-between thing between a pistol and a rifle is some kind of big problem and has to be heavily regulated. Well, to me that's absolutely ridiculous. And I know if you guys have been watching my videos, you know that I know this or that I think this. Um, the whole reason that SBRs ended up on the NFA, what they wanted to outlaw or make it so expensive and so hard to acquire that normal people just wouldn't get them, what they were trying to get rid of was handguns, pistols. But at the last minute, there was just too much pressure from the other side and they couldn't keep pistols on the National Firearms Act registry. But what they forgot to do was to pull short barreled rifles off it. Short barreled rifles were only on that registry as a means to, they didn't want people to try to get around not being able to get pistols by having shorter barreled rifles. Well, pistols ended up coming off of the NFA anyway. And so SBRs should have as well, but they didn't. And we've dealt with this for a long time because We've had pistol braces. Now, a lot of people, yeah, it's kind of a Gucci thing. Pay your $200, wait for your tax stamp. Then you can SBR your platform, put a real stock on it, vertical foregrip if you want, and have your short barreled rifle. All good and fine. But again, for those people that didn't want to do that, these pistol braces were a great thing. And what they did is they made the, the gun community um, just boom with these kinds of platforms. They became very popular and all of these companies 
every single firearm just about that they create, they have well, every single firearm with a barrel less than 16 inches that's not a handgun, they've made a pistol format. Now, sure, you can get the SBR format as well when it comes to lots of these things. But the reason why they were able to sell so many of them is because of pistol braces. And what's bothering me, this pistol brace rule literally just dropped like a week ago. And already, you know, I'm on all these email lists and stuff from all these different firearms companies. And already I'm seeing that nobody is selling anything with pistol braces anymore. Even though we have 120 days to register these things, if you're going to go that route. Nobody's selling them anymore, even though the ATF has said it's still perfectly legal to sell pistol braces. But all the firearms, such as something like this, that would normally have come with a pistol brace, now they're selling it with just like a round buffer tube and a piece of foam over it. So you can do the cheek shooting thing, which is, you know, what people did for a long time, even with the braces, until the ATF said that it was okay to shoulder them. So, everybody, it's like all these companies, the whole industry has forgotten about braces already. Which really bothers me. Because we need support behind all the lawsuits and behind all the bills that have been presented in order to fight this thing. And I think that we can go one of two ways, and either one of them would be perfectly acceptable in my opinion. And I'm hoping that one of them goes through before this 120 days is up. I'm not afraid to still show pistol brace firearms on my channel because like I said, we still have like 113 days or something right now. Um, so there's still quite a bit of time. And the day that that rule finally was published in the federal register, there was already three lawsuits out against it in the week before that, there have been multiple bills presented in Congress. Um, things all the way from the SHORT Act, which is the Stop Harassing Owners of Firearms Today, all the way to <laughs> Matt Gaetz's Abolish the ATF. And also bills to, you know, repeal the NFA. Uh, bills to take SBRs off the NFA. All of these things. And while they're very, they're not likely to pass given who we have in the White House right now, it's still good to see that they are going after this thing and that they are at least showing their support for gun owners. Now, as I said in my last Sunday video, how effective really is that when they know it's not gonna pass? Why didn't they put these kinds of bills forward when we had a Republican majority in the House, the Senate, and the White House? You know what I mean? But. At least they're doing it now, and it is in response to this pistol brace ruling. What I think is more likely to succeed are some of these um, these lawsuits. There's been a few of them. Um, Gun Owners America, um, some military veterans have sued the ATF over this. And hopefully, one of these lawsuits will get it up to the Supreme Court, and we'll get a ruling that either says, ATF, you cannot make law. These have been perfectly legal for 10 years. They're still perfectly legal. You've overstepped your boundaries. Chevron deference isn't meant to be used in a way that puts people liable for you know prison time and fines. It's absolutely ridiculous. Or, if we're really lucky, it goes up to the Supreme Court and we get short belt rifles taken off the NFA. Because if the ATF is saying that these have been short barreled rifles this entire time, well, they've also been perfectly legal for this entire time. They haven't shown to be causing any significant amount of crime or problems. If there's any extra crime involved with pistol braced firearms, it's just because of the popularity of pistol braced firearms on the market and how many of them are out there now after 10 years of people buying them. They've circulated. Of course, criminals are gonna get their hands on them just like anything else. So I think that any logical justice, judge, court would look at this and go, okay, well, if you guys are saying that these things are SBRs, well, then SBRs shouldn't be on the NFA. 
and hopefully that's where we'll go. Maybe the fifth circle will do it. They've been, you know, very helpful to the firearms cause lately with the ruling on um, bump stocks. It's a very, very similar kind of case. And, uh, you know, so maybe that same kind of ruling will help us out with pistol braces. We will see. But what saddens me is that without these pistol braces or without SBRs being taken off the NFA, we're going to have stagnant, um, what's the word, innovation in the gun industry in a lot of ways. Because, like I said, I've already seen lots of shorter barrel guns being advertised without braces anymore. Or I've seen things like this. This is a 9mm AR. All of a sudden, there's tons of 16-inch barrel AR9s out there. 16-inch barrel 300 blackouts. Well, that doesn't make sense. The only reason that you want an AR-9 or a 300 blackout is because they perform well out of a shorter barrel. Therefore, a shorter barrel gun works better for something like that. Pistol caliber carbines, I would not want a pistol caliber carbine with a 16 inch barrel. And I know that that's one of their choices that you can do to make your firearm comply with their ridiculous rule, is you can put a 16 inch upper on it that defeats the whole purpose of having a shorter barreled firearm. And that to me is unacceptable. So is taking off the brace because shooting it with your cheek, while it may work and it may be effective, is not nearly as effective as the brace is. We all know this to be true. So I don't want to see the firearms industry go away from creating these, these very effective firearms that have shorter barrels just because of this pistol brace rule that hasn't even reached that 120 day point yet and i don't know if there's a whole lot that the rest of us can do about it at the moment except for to support these organizations that are supporting us to get a hold of our representatives and our senators and to make videos like this and get the word out but Hopefully one of these things will happen. Hopefully this will all just go away or maybe it'll benefit us and it'll get SBRs taken off the National Firearms Act or get the NFA repealed altogether. But I got to give it to pistol braces for just enabling the kind of innovation in the market that we've seen over the last 10 years. Some of the most popular firearms are things just like this 11 and a half inch ar-15 pistol it's a great gun i love it love my 300 blackout my nine millimeter ar i was out shooting this thing today and i just can't imagine a world in which we can't have these things that we've been able to have this entire time without a problem it uh it actually saddens me a little bit so let's see what happens when it comes to this stuff you know, I'm still waiting on the can for this. It's not even done yet. And they want to make it an illegal SBR. Now, everyone's going to have to make the decision for themselves whether they're going to comply with this rule or not. But I would wait. Wait and see what happens during the next 120 days because you don't want to put yourself on a registry and then find out that you didn't have to in the first place. So, figure out what you're going to do. I'm going to figure out what I'm going to do. But for now... I'm going to wait a little while. I talked to my local FFL, and that's exactly what they're doing as well. You know, we, we do have four months to see what happens with this thing, and there's already a ton of opposition to it. So hopefully some of that opposition either reverses this whole rule or we get SBRs. That would be amazing. Worst case scenario, we have to deal with this thing. If you're not going to comply, don't comply quietly. Don't go posting it all over the internet. If you are, do what you gotta do. Everybody's gotta make that decision for themselves. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you enjoy my channel. I put up three videos every week, so make sure you're subscribed. If you did like it, give me a like, share this, leave me a comment, tell me what you think about this whole thing. And from Sawtooth Tactical, stay strapped or get clapped.